why is 2014 special? Well, I mean, all of Coddling the American Mind is trying to figure out why 2014 is special. We talk about six causal, causal threads that kind of come to a head in 2014. And, and, and what was happening there that you and John Haidt both mm. observed that yeah. you were like, something's happening, the ground has shifted, Yeah, what's going on? Well, the, the thing that made me and FIRE, my organization, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, um, who defends freedom of speech, we um, noticed that uh, just students were showing up and demanding um, new speech codes, were demanding deplatforming in a way that they just hadn't been. For you know, FIRE will be will have been around for 25 years as of next year. Oh, Our entire that's awesome. history. Yeah, students were always the best constituency for free speech. Yeah, the sort of California Berkeley anti-Vietnam free speech. Don't tread on me. You're the man, kind of thing. Yeah. And we thought that that was going to be, um, you know, and we just thought that was a stable fact. And then suddenly the students were the ones demanding the censorship. Now, I always want to be clear here. That doesn't mean that the administrators who used to be kind of the, the bad guys when it came to freedom of speech until like 2013 suddenly stopped. Actually, one of the dirty little secrets of how it got worse on campus is that administrators were like, hey, you guys want to shut down speech? Awesome. Hey, you know, like, I think we should we should shut this guy down. Um, that, that there's there, there, there's some parasitism, <laughs> so yeah. I want to call it, some symbiosis. Yeah, no, parasite's fair. Yeah. Parasite's completely accurate. <laughs> uh, okay, so coddling lays out these this set, a lot of which is about parenting and psychology. Yeah. Yep. And then it starts before they get to their college campus. Because I think that's one of the things that you're, that coddling almost singularly brought to the table yeah. into the conversation was everyone was focused, especially right-wingers, like, college is a bunch of communists. Yeah. This is the problem. Your professor's turning you into a jerk. But the kids are showing up like little jerks. Oh, yeah, yeah. And shouting down their professors and throwing temper tantrums like they're infants. They, th they, they, they think they're showing up like little heroes. Yeah. But they're like emotionally stunted by at least three years. They basically show up. So, you know, really quick, summarize like what is sure. the... I can't do quick. You got it. We got a lot to cover here. It took me, me, me 100,000 words to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> no, for coddling. So sure, what, sure, was, yeah, yeah. what was that set of things that you, you know, honed in on? For, for coddling, we talk about six different causal threads. One of them, um, you know, is obviously the most important one is social media. The other one is political polarization. We talk about the parenting factors. One, lack of free play was mm -hmm. the one we were the most kind of surprised that we had oh, a whole chapter on. Helicopter, that. overprotective parenting. Yeah, paranoid parenting. Why campuses, um, hyper bureaucratization, and ideology. Now, so, so we want to be clear. We think like ideology is there. It's just one out of six reasons. And we've actually added to it that we thought we didn't hit hard enough in the parenting chapters about the weird, unhealthy compact we seem to have with parents that if you can get your kids into the fancy schools, yeah, you're set for life. But if you can't, you might you, you yeah. might sink down to the middle classes, and things aren't that great there. Did you come across Hara Morano's A Nation of Wimps along the way? I am familiar with it, but I haven't read it. So I interviewed her as part of that early film project, and she was the earliest, perhaps, canary in the coal mine. Yeah, because she 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 uh, was a, a is a was. W is or was a writer. She was at the time a writer at Psychology Today. Uh -huh. She somehow got onto an email thread with college campus mental health center people, like, you know, some, you know, Usenet group. Yeah. In which they were all talking about how they're suddenly being overrun with students coming to them. And this was in the, this was, I, I can't remember the exact time frame, but it was in the earlier 2000s. Yeah, and, and, and what I heard from Julie lefkant Hames is something, the kids started showing up like this in 2001. Yes, that's at, what it was. It was right around then. Add social media to the mix, um, and and this is one of the things that that that, that differs coddling from uh, canceling. Um, to, when it comes to cancel culture, that's not a product of, of of parenting. That's a product of what happens when you leave when you give a super power technology to the you know, the sort of mean girls culture of, of junior high. That the and by that you mean Harvard. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I mean actually I mean our entire society. Basically, I feel oh, like yeah. we we all argue like a junior high school now because we have learned how to argue from junior high school students and we didn't revise that. <laughs> so this is coming together, this um, overprotected set of kids mm -hmm. who didn't go outside and play, Enough. who didn't like have the time to make up games and figure out like, oh, if I'm too much of a jerk, nobody wants to play with me because their entire schedule is structured 
and supervised by authority figures, and then school sucks and it's just authoritarian, so then that's going on. Yeah. They're already losing their minds, so to speak, in in the early 2000s. Like, and I, I say that's insensitive. You know, they're experiencing very difficult challenges that they didn't need to be experiencing to the extent that they were. Yeah. And then along comes Facebook and Instagram and and, and Twitter and supercharges charges all of that. Yep. So the 2014, what is starting to happen? Tw there? 2014 is when Gen Z starts hitting. Uh, college and large okay. numbers. And if you look at kind of a lot of the thread here, um, and Height and I, I watch this, uh, is you can see, you know, 2013, 2014, Gen Z starts hitting, uh, hitting campus. And then um, when you start seeing a lot more cancellations going on in corporations, it's like 2018, 2019, when, they, when they've been graduating, right. uh, you, you know, and they're young, young at these places. So it does tend to follow uh, Gen Z, um, unfortunately. Now, in the book, you also say, and I've seen this because it's very easy to pile on Gen Z, especially like, I'm 46, I'm like a Gen Xer. Oh, and one thing I, that my co-author always tries to be fair about. Um, they Gen, hate cancel culture. Gen Z hates cancel culture more than any other group, but that's partially because they grew up with it and they know how nasty it is. And it's funny because like the like kind of the only people who are really um, on mass kind of like okay with cancel culture, millennials. <laughs> <laughs> Can we all agree mill millennials are actually the worst? <laughs> Can we just <laughs> and Gen X is the best. Yes, yeah. Gen X. We there was a great video by um, uh, one of the nice stats that was about the fourth turning, and he basically at the end of it is like, "It's on us as Gen Xers to solve the problem." But it, it always is though. <laughs> we, we won't get any credit for it because boomers are egomaniacs and yeah. Well, no, actually, I've noticed this that. There's a lot of talk of boomers, and then Gen X is like completely erased from history now. It's like it goes we boomers, like it that way. and then millennials and and Gen and Gen Z are the only people ever talked about in this generational stuff. The secret of being cool is never demanding that people look at you. You just have to hang out and with Gen, and Gen X is cool. <laughs> we are just hanging out in the corner with Ethan Hawke and Winona Ryder, <laughs> fixing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're enjoying remakes of, uh, of, of um, Karate Kid as adults, playing with our Legos, and just leave us the hell alone. Um, okay, so that's 2014. Gen Z hits college, starts going crazy, starts yelling at Yale professors because they think maybe the school shouldn't dictate what Halloween costumes are at the yeah. bureaucratic level. But to level. be clear, that whole thing, like that was part of a semester long campaign at like 100 schools across the country where the formula was find something to be offended about and then demand something be done. Um, this happened at University of Mass uh, Massachusetts Amherst where they demanded that a newspaper get uh, get defunded for having daring to write an article basically saying cops can be good people too. This happened at Claremont McKenna as we talked about in um, in coddling to yep. a, a student who was trying to say, no, but really you are part of the community to a <laughs> minority student didn't, didn't use, uh, didn't phrase it the, the perfectly, but still like the, she ended up in a, you know, kind of Maoist struggle uh, circle. And of course the, the Yale uh, situation where what Erica Kurstakis actually wrote was an old fashioned defense of are, who are we to actually be telling students to do this? They can figure this stuff out on, on their own. And by the way, the way they're going to figure this out is a, a bunch of students saying, hey, dude, your costume's offensive, and then they probably won't wear it. But it doesn't require official intervention um, by the university to be involved, and, and it's sort of inappropriate for it, too. You know, it, it was defending students' autonomy. Um, yeah. But then it was, of course, uncharitably interpreted as, uh, as, and I've watched actual Yale professors claim this, like, well, you have this professor out there saying that people showed on Klan robes. And I'm kind of like, wow, you are really spinning this. Like, no, it's, it's crazy. Like, 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 like the, the, okay. the, the attempt to rewrite what happened with Nicholas and Eric Rostak is, is outrageous, including um, former head of the, the Democratic Party, like that ha had like a, a Twitter fight with, with him and him and Nicholas because he was misrepresenting um, the, 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 the guy who did the yee. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> the, um, Howard, Howard Dean. Dean. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Jinx. Yee. And it was, it was embarrassing. Of all the people to be like, not a cancel culture warrior, the guy yeah. whose presidential campaign gets, gets uh, destroyed for being well, over-miked at a rally. He was just repeating kind of like the, 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 the underground Yale spin on what had actually happened there that was completely inaccurate to, to the actual event because they're rightfully embarrassed by it. But, they, but since they're, you know, in the, they're in the epistemic driver's seat, you know, they're like, oh, well, we can rewrite history. History isn't written by the, uh, uh, by, by the victors, it's written by Yale graduates. It's, it's, it's written by the barbarians who win. 
is when really <laughs> it's like, can I kill you or silence you with threat of force? And then I get to write or the history book. rich Yale legacies. <laughs> I'm, you're, you're acting like there's a distinction there. Um, I'm going to argue over the course of this conversation that perhaps there is not. Uh -huh. um, so, 2017. Yes. Is this all, is this social media and coddled, like, infantile kids r run up against Trump and then hell breaks loose to the next degree and we go d one more level down in Dante's Inferno? Like, what makes 2017 the thing? Definitely Trump. Um, okay. that, that essentially, and I can't, I can't remember who exactly wrote this, but um, Yasha Monk talks about it. You know, like the idea that sort of like the inability to do anything about Trump just got sort of cannibalize your own tribe. That being said, 2017 was gonna be a bad year, kind of like, I, I think on campus, even without Trump. I don't think it would have been as bad of a year because people wouldn't quite have lost their mind, but the trajectory was it would have been something um, in, in 2017. I think it might also be, and I tend to forget about this, is that 2017 is Trump, but then in the several years prior, you have these different sort of you know, racially charged events, yeah. Ferguson and, and whatnot, yeah. and Trayvon Martin. And so there is a, you know, Black Lives Matter is formed, I think 2015? Yeah. So there's already this like rapidly rising like identity politics sort of thing happening. Yeah. I'm inclined to call it bad names and I will, but for now I'm just gonna call it a thing. Yeah. Right, so how much of that um, is part of feeding 2017 that Trump then just poils oil, oil, uh, gas on the fire. It, it, it's a polarization spiral, as, as me and Height call it. Um, that essentially, and this is the thing that makes me frustrated when people are like, just you know, when they want to talk about just the right and the left in complete isolation. I'm like, what do you think they're reacting to? Right. Um, because I, I, one something that ended up not being in the book in Coddling the American Mind that I kind of wish we kept in there was uh, I, I'm not I'm, I'm I'm not a fan of Trump. Um, the, the uh, I'm sorry to your, your listeners and readers who might be, but I, I, I'm personally not. Yeah. Um, and I, so I wanted his opponent to win, even though I wasn't her biggest fan. Um, I remember two weeks maybe before the election at Berkeley, um, so 2016, a bunch of students linked arm in arm and wouldn't let white students get through unless they could show that they were trans or gay or something that made them, you know. They had uh, to have some other intersection in the yeah. the wheels of, of intersectional hierarchy that undergrads now get forced to look at as all, part of their gen ed requirements. All caught on tape. Um, you know, and they have to you know, go yeah. or, like go around um, in, in order not to, 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 to anyway. And, I, and you know, watching this, I'm like, okay, this is wrong and racist and messed up. And by the way, do you want Trump to win? Uh, like, the, because this was all over Fox News and right, it was real right. and it was happening at Berkeley and it's kind of like, wow, th th you guys have lost the thread. This is, th this is nuts. So a lot of people, you know, they, they sometimes will talk about sort of wokeism coming from Trump. And I'm like, no, actually to a degree, sort of like what, what might be, I actually, you know, you know what term I prefer to wokeism? Tim, Ur Tim Urban's social justice fundamentalism, because I, I think it, it, it's- That's, That sounds about right. Yeah, I, 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 I- They're I, closer to actual jihadis than <laughs> simply, I, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we're here, it's October, it's 2023. I think that analogy is quite apt, frankly. Yeah. Well, so um, sometimes they're really into jihadis. So <laughs> they're like, they like them. Yeah, they, they put them on their t-shirts. These guys are swell. <laughs> um, lately, that's what it seems to feel like. Uh, anyway, yeah. that, that, that's for, 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 for further down. So these things, um, they always play in reaction to each other. And I definitely think that the Trump phenomenon was at least in part, you know, a reaction to the left and the left reacted to Trump. And, and then it just feeds into this ridiculous polarization spiral. So 2017, one of the things that was really notable about 2017 and the data is that prior to, we should really be counting the professor cancellations probably starting in 2017, because that's when you see the real acceleration of students finally saying, I'm gonna sign a, professor, uh, a, a, a petition to get my professor punished or fired even in many, in many of those petitions, which was just not normal in most of my career. It wasn't that, that students weren't mad at professors. They were mad at professors all the time, but they'd write an article about it or even, or even like have a protest. And not even all that often. Um, but the whole additional step to, 
I'm going to get you out of your job because we disagree. That's nuts. And, and, and unfortunately, like I, we just had a, a fire faculty conference and uh, we had a, a, you know, social science who kind of dug into like what they're actually, um, why they actually think uh, professors uh, should be reported to the bias related incident program. Um, and it's specifically about having wrong opinions. Like it, it, it's not like someone you said wrong something, so, so, something racially offensive. It, it, it's like, well, you, you know, it, it's not that uh, he just opposes affirmative action, you know, like for, for example, like in, in a class and it's like, that's, um, that's bad. If you like that clip, we've got a lot more where that came from. Be sure to check out our full conversations by subscribing to the channel so you won't miss our new videos as they come out each week.